Liebe Studentinnen, liebe Studenten, liebe Zuschauer, herzlich willkommen zu unserer Veranstaltung Webby Official Opening Season. Diese Veranstaltung ist von Referat Ausländische Studierende gefördert. Dieses Referat begrüßt jede Initiative, die von ausländischen Studierenden in der Universität Leipzig was organisieren. Mein Name ist Abdul Aziz Bashuri, ich bin Referent im RAS und verantwortlich für die Öffentlichkeitsarbeit. Und wie gesagt, wir begrüßen immer eure Initiativen auf Deutsch, auf Englisch, auf allen Sprachen. Und ihr könnt immer gerne zu dem Referat kommen und eure Ideen weiterbringen. Und wir versuchen das an die Öffentlichkeit Arbeit und weiterhin an allen Institutionen Leipzig weiterzuleiten. Diese Veranstaltung wird dann äh, auf Englisch gehalten. Also auf Deutsch wird es schwierig äh, für viele und es ist ja auch eine internationale Veranstaltung und Englisch ist ja die meistgesprochene pra Sprache äh, mittlerweile. Deswegen können auch uns viele verstehen, hoffentlich. Äh, die Veranstaltung ist auch äh, direkt online übertragen auf einen Livestreamer von der Gruppe oder von der Integrative Gruppe. Deswegen äh, würde ich auch ähm, ein paar Worte auf Arabisch sagen, für diejenigen, die uns auch auf Arabisch zuschauen. Ich <lacht> هذه مبادرة من عدة دول عربية وغير عربية من مصر، البرازيل، غانا، كولومبيا، الإمارات، سنغافورة، قطر وألمانيا في جامعة لايبسيش وسنقوم اليوم بالإعداد باللغة الإنجليزية وليس العربية أو الألمانية ولكن جميع الأسئلة نستطيع أن نأخذها بعدة لغات في جميع اللغات الإنجليزية، الألمانية والعربية لذلك تستطيعون الأسئلة بأي لغة أنتم تريدونها ونحن سوف نتكلم مع البروفيسور والطلاب الذين سيقومون بهذه المحاضرة ونعطيهم آراءكم في هذه الليلة Von meiner Seite, ich bin schon fertig, ich gebe das Wort weiter und wünsche euch viel Erfolg. Dankeschön. Super. Danke, Aziz. Ähm, guten Abend, meine Damen und Herren. Wir freuen uns, dass ihr dabei seid. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are very happy to have you around in our midst today. Today is a very great day for Lifefish University and the student of Lifefish um, for being a part of this initiative which we are unveiling today to all of you. Um, let me take you through what you should be expecting for the past or uh, for the next one hour or so. First of all, we would call on Mohammed to take us through what Webby is about. What is Webby? I think almost all of you will be wondering what W-E-B-I is about. Then we'll call on Harry also, who is the vice president, and Mohammed is also the, uh, the president of Webby. Um, Harry, who is the vice president of Webby Leipzig, to also take us through some of the technical words that yeah, you can find in most of what we call e-entrepreneurship, internet economy, and we were, we were supposed to have our professor Don Vega around to also take part in this program, but unfortunately, unfortunately, he's supposed to be a part of the jury um, for the Innovation Prize Leipzig, so he could not be around, but he has assured us that he would be a part of the subsequent programs. Then you'd See a video, a video will be shown to you about some of the events that some co-founders have taken part in. Then, Mohammed would come again to tell us how we all can be a part of this initiative. Because it is not only for the few founders or the few initiators, it is for all of us how we can um, 
generate ideas, how we can bring up all our ideas together to make this a successful um, initiative. Then we'll also show you a video before we leave to incite you to think more about what internet economy is about and what we as students of Leipzig University and the student beyond Leipzig University can or should um, think about when we are talking about internet economy and the opportunities that are or can be found in internet economy. I would also want to say thank you to these um, organizations who have supported or have been a part of this program up till now. I want to say thank you to RAS Leipzig, I want to say thank you to Stuart Leipzig, and I want to say a big thank you to Seth Leipzig for being a part of this initiative. We are very grateful. So first of all, I'll call on the President Mohammed to take us through what Webby is about and open up what the box that or the surprises that we have for you today. So please, can you get a, give it up for Mohammed as he comes to tell us what Webby is about? Thank you, Kobe. And thank you everyone for coming here today. A couple of months ago, Eurozone Finance Minister have reached an agreement to finance the Greek government with a package, rescue package that was 130 billion euros. And at the same time, the world's largest social network, Facebook.com, were celebrating their eighth birthday. And also finalizing their application for their initial public offering. Facebook, which now has more than 845 billion active users, are looking to raise $10 billion through their upcoming IPO, which will take part in the next few days. In terms of money raised, the IPO would rank among the five largest in the past 15 years. And in terms of the market value, Facebook market value is estimated to hit $96 billion, beating the largest market value of UPS when it went for IPO in 1999. Now, could you ever imagine that a website would have a bigger market value than a country, than a GDP of a country like Bulgaria, which has 7 million population, or a country like Morocco, which has 32 million population. Now, could you ever imagine that a company or a website which was born 8 years ago, like Facebook, would have market value comparable to McDonald's, or even bigger than Kraft Foods or Walt Disney, which took decades to be built. According to the World Bank, the internet users were represented 3%, 6% in 2000. And in 2010, the internet users were representing 31% of the global population. The dramatic increase of the internet users have fundamentally, has fundamentally changed the way entrepreneurs do business. With the dawn of internet economy, online businesses, dot-com businesses, a new generation of entrepreneurs was born. And this is only one side of the story, but of course, there are many different stories from many different countries, from many different continents like states, Europe, and even developing countries, such achieve good success stories. One of the most famous examples in the Middle East, Maktoub.com, which was acquired by the iOS-based 
Yahoo in 2009, Dina was worth $165 million. A few days, days ago, online retailer from Jordan, Marka VIP, has just announced the third round of, the, of investment that was $10 million. And of course, we have other success stories from many different countries. Give you some example of a mobile application company from Egypt that's called vmov.com. They developed an application for weather, it's called Weather HD. This application achieved the iPhone and iPad most selling app for 2010. The World in Business Initiative is a social startup that was launched in Cairo 2011. It's managed by a group of young entrepreneurs from many different countries and different experience in innovation, technology, and business with a passion to spread awareness about the entrepreneurship and promote for the internet economy. We empower the internet entrepreneurs by enabling them, or giving them access to a global networking opportunities, resources, information about the entrepreneurship and internet economy. Our vision is to establish a platform networking 10,000 internet entrepreneurs over all the world in different business stages by 2015. Seven years ago, the founder of the Facebook was a student like us. You need to be the founder of the Facebook in order to make a change. But you just need to take the first step. And once you're, you're here, you will need to talk it. Now look around. Do you see the challenge? Thank you. Mohammed, yeah, I think we're seeing the challenge, but to get a better understanding about the challenge, we call on the Vice President, Harry, to elaborate it more. Harry. Uh, it's always good when you get a claps before saying anything. <laughs> so so uh, we have we have talked about a lot about uh, entrepreneurship, uh, internet economy, and everything. But what exactly are those terms? Because it seems to be some kind of uh, buzzword. Now, if we look at the, at the ecosystem, <coughs> these are some motivational words. Okay. Uh, in the, the so-called web ecosystem, we have a lot of startups. Now, these companies that have really nice logos that uh, we know about Facebook and Twitter and Technorati, this, this kind of, of uh, companies. But these companies, uh, everything revolves around some, some key terms uh, like internet economy, digital economy, uh, internet entrepreneurship, e-business, startups, innovation. And we always have this little E attached to the word. Now, this little E is exactly this electronic aspect of this, this whole effort. And, but as you can see here, everything is a little bit uh, scrambled, so you, you cannot understand very well how these things are actually working. So the first thing is you have the, the internet, the so-called digital economy. We can use these terms interchangeably. Uh, the internet or so-called digital economy uh, is somehow an opposition to the traditional economy. Uh, have you ever heard of Nicholas Negroponte, the guy who developed the $100 uh, notebook? Yeah, yeah. He's like a, a, te he's a technology evangelist and he said that before, we had the economy made of atoms. That means you have products, you need to ship these products using huge ships all over the world. And now we have the economy made of bits. Bits that are pieces of information. Bits that can be transferred like in a matter of seconds all the way from China to Brazil or from Germany to, to Morocco or something. Okay? And 
uh, together in this whole environment, we have a very important component, which is the innovation. This environment, this digital economy, has only been made possible through innovation. Now, and innovation, we all have an uh, understanding of what innovation is. It's creating new products, creating new services, new ideas, and it's all about creation, new, new value creation. Uh, Peter Drucker, of course, we all know Peter Drucker. He's the, the management guru of the, of the last century. When we say last century, it seems a, little, a, a lot farther. Uh, the message to that, he says that uh, innovation is tightly coupled with uh, entrepreneurship. And entrepreneurship is using innovation as a tool to explore changes in the market, changes in the environment. Uh, the introduction of the digital economy has been a major change in the way people do business, in the way people communicate, in the way people get connected. So this has, give, this has given rise to the so-called e-entrepreneurship. The e-entrepreneurship is exactly this effort of some entrepreneurs to take advantage of these changes and, and turn them, what is that? <laughs> and turn them, and it's not over yet. Uh, and turn them into business opportunities. And uh, in this e-entrepreneurship, we also have the, the terms e-business and e-commerce, which are uh, totally related. Uh, these, these, two, these two components, they are most of the time carried out by, by big corporations, like Amazon, uh, like... We, we have a lot of examples of these kind of e-commerce e companies. No? But, we also have uh, SMEs in this environment, the so-called small and medium enterprises, which uh, at the end of the day is our focus here. Uh, these SMEs, they are represented by the so-called startups. Startups are those uh, internet companies that, uh, that typically are very innovative and typically are also uh, venture capital backed. That means they have a, lot of, a very high rate of innovation and also risk associated with it. Therefore, they need these venture capitalists who are willing to take the risk to develop this kind of uh, business. Okay, uh, that seems really interesting. We have uh, a lot of opportunities uh, in this area. We can take advantage of the, of the digital economy, take advantage of the, the instantaneity of information that we can transfer information from here to there extremely easily. But uh, why, why become an internet, internet entrepreneur? Why, why is it any different from any kind of entrepreneur? And so, it also uh, is the question, so why is Swabby uh, aiming at this specific public, the internet entrepreneurs and not the agricultural entrepreneurs and not the, the nuclear power entrepreneurs? Uh, the first thing is that entrepreneurs are entrepreneurs. That means that people who have the calling to, to make a difference, people who have the calling to, to be independent, to actually make a difference in the world, they can also use the, the internet as a tool for this. They, they can also uh, leverage on freedom, they can also... Uh, that, that, that's all about change. No? So entrepreneurs are entrepreneurs, so this is one, one very clear reason why we should strive for this for this step. But talking about specifically about the e-entrepreneurship itself, one very important aspect is that you have a, a relatively low investment if you compare this to other kinds of, of entrepreneurial activity. Uh, all you need is to have a, a website, to have a, a clear marketing strategy, and you are ready to go. If you are uh, founding a company which is a manufacturing company, then you need huge investment of capital goods. You need to buy machines, you need to hire a lot of people, you need to do uh, construction work, you need a, a physical site. So uh, for any, any kind of a business activity compared to internet economy, it's way more expensive. So this is a very important aspect that we want to highlight. Second one uh, is global reach. Uh, as we have mentioned, uh, using the digital, the digital economy, the internet, you can reach customers all over the globe. Yeah. If you have a, a small shop on the street, you are only reaching the customer that go by every day. Using the internet, you can, you can have this, this uh, outreach much more effectively. 
You can have customers in China or have customers in Germany, have customers in your own country. So this alone is a very, very compelling reason to go for the entrepreneurship. Another, another aspect. Uh, entrepreneurship uh, is heavily based on the use of technology, on the use of innovative technology tools. So uh, if you develop a, a, a web business in such a way that you can actually automate a lot of processes, for example, we have today the so-called uh, payment solutions. You can, you can embed in your web portal uh, like a, a PayPal components. PayPal, we all know, it's the, the, this payment gateway. That PayPal automates all the process for you. The billing, the, the clearance of the, of, the, of the bill for the customer, so all the process is transparent for the entrepreneur. So you can, you can, uh, you can somehow make your web business an automated business. And this is only possible or is facilitated uh, if, you, if your business is based on the internet, on the digital economy. Okay? And another very important aspect uh, is that it's comparatively cheap advertising. Uh, if we have another, one, another example of the, of the small shop, uh, you need to, to print uh, advertising, you need to contact newspapers, you need to go for these billboards, so there is a lot of money. Uh, in the internet, on the internet, you can use, uh, for example, the social media platforms, you can use, of course, Facebook, Twitter, you can send targeted emails for your customers, you can trace profiles about them, so it's easier to do a targeted marketing. Yeah? So, these are, of course, we have a lot of other uh, advantages for the, for the internet economy, for the entrepreneurship as compared to to the to the traditional uh, traditional internet entrepreneur to traditional entrepreneurs, but uh, do you think there is any disadvantage of being an internet entrepreneur? For example, competition. Competition is a very important factor because you have a lot of other players in the market. <coughs> yeah, sorry. All, all, of course, of course, all over the world. But the good news are that uh, by using the, the leverage of the internet, you can target a very small and specific niche. You can target your product so that your, your public, your, your target audience is so specific that you can sell, that you can have a, a very high competitive advantage compared to a uh, general purpose provider. This is also possible. Uh, can you name another disadvantage of the internet? Entrepreneurship? The safety factor. The safety factor. Of course, safety factor is extremely important, of course, because uh, if you, as, as a customer, if you are not feeling comfortable in buying in that website, of course you're not going to buy and you're not going to make your, your profit uh, as an entrepreneur. But of course you do have tools that can ensure for the customer this level of security. Um, Traffic generation as a main source for potential. Okay. Yeah. Of course, the, the traffic generation also falls into the competition category because you need to have a clear marketing strategy to be able to reach to reach the customer. I mean, uh, we should make no mistakes. We are not saying that we are not saying that uh, the internet entrepreneurship is like the silver bullet for entrepreneurship. Of course, you do have a lot of challenges. You do have to overcome some obstacles. But these obstacles, they are present also in the real world. If you, if you build a, a small uh, pet shop, then you have to compete with the pet shops all around. You have to compete with uh, a lot of people. The thing is that uh, this form of entrepreneurship is available to a wide public. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. Of course, we, we, we have to consider this uh, when you are, we are also, uh, offering. Sure. She means the accessibility. Accessibility. Uh, everything is related. Uh, talking about the, the internet uh, aspect. Uh, if your if your website, if your web product offers, uh, let's say, high interactivity content like. Uh, massive videos, massive uh, 
let's say, HD movies and this kind of stuff, and your target public is sitting uh, somewhere deep into the, to the, to the very, very stranded areas in Brazil, these guys probably won't be able to consume your service because they do not have the appropriate infrastructure. So you also have to consider these parameters when they're designing your service. You know? And also the accessibility uh, question that, that Mohammed posed. Yeah? Any anything else? Yeah? Okay. So I think all of us are going to be in the previous lady. Professional. <laughs> yeah? Professional. Right, professional. Professional. SEO. Mm -hmm. Or SEO as an search engine of monitors, which is now yeah. is like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course, like a, a very, very important career, it's like, okay, but how, how am I, am I going to do any business online if I'm not acquainted with these technologies, if I, if I have never seen a, a line of code in my face? Uh, there are a lot of startup companies right now that are focused exactly on this task, making technology available for people who have no technical knowledge. Uh, I have talked about PayPal, no? This PayPal gateway is extremely easy from a, from a non-technical perspective to embed on your website. You have the so-called uh, content management systems. These are uh, platforms uh, that you can customize your own website without having a web designer, without having a uh, system analyst sitting by your site. So this is also actually a, a niche of this kind of startups. Okay. Okay, uh, we have, uh, Mohammed has talked about uh, Facebook, has talked about Yahoo, some, some very successful startups also in the, the Middle East and everything. But uh, these are extremely successful examples, but of course they are, they are very inspiring. But on the, on the other hand, it may also prevent us from actually doing something. If you think of uh, Zuckerberg, the guy's uh, like a billionaire, and even though you think of him as a student, you cannot relate to him because it's far, way too far from us. But the good news are that uh, using this uh, internet economy, using the leverage power of uh, instant communication, you can have some very simple uh, internet business ideas. Uh, we, get, we have just got a few, a few samples of, about these ideas. And uh, if you want to start on the, the internet economy, you don't need to be the next Facebook. You don't need to be the next Twitter. We have a set some ideas here, like for example, uh, create an information-based website. Uh, the, biggest, uh, the biggest commodity on this uh, digital economy age is information. information. So if you can share some kind of information with the world, you can set up a business around this knowledge sharing, about this information sharing. Uh, make and sell e-products. Uh, there are some people on, the, on, the, on this eco web ecosystem that are making a lot of money selling ebooks. There is one guy on the internet, uh, the guy's called Chris Gallo, and he has a like a, he has a mission, which is to travel to all the countries in the world, and he has built a blog around this and uh, an ebook around this concept, and he's selling a lot of those ebooks teaching people how to take advantage of miles, on how to get a visa to Myanmar, and this kind of, of situations. 